Welcome again. In this video, we'll look how we can update a database record from a Java web application. In this video, we'll review the use case diagrams for the update. We'll also add components for the update use case to the example application. Here we see our goal in action. We see a list of books from our database. This is done using the read use case. We have an add a book link, which we can add books to the database. We have delete links for each row. If we click it, it will delete. And we have an update. When a user clicks update for a particular record, let's try Ian Banks, consider Phlebas, click update, we'll see a form that already includes the database record data, so we can change it. Let's do a simple change. Let's change the 430 pages to 450 and click update record. When the user clicks update record, the changes that we make in this form should be made to the database. They will then return to the read table. We should see the changes that we make reflected in that table. Notice now that Ian Banks, consider Phlebas, now has 450 pages. Let's review our design diagrams before adding the update code. Here's our sitemap. We see that when a user clicks update, they'll see a form that's very much like the add entry page, except for the update entry page will include the data that is currently available in the record of the database. When the user changes the data in the form, they'll click on update entry button, which will return to the main page with the database table. Here's our swim lane diagram, which we use to see the components that we'll need to create to make the update use case happen. Again, on the client side, the user will click the update link. We'll then go to an update form servlet. This will have to query the database so that we can create the update form. We need to get the data from the current record selected. So we'll have a record clear query class that will let us do this. We'll use the book class as necessary. Once the record query and the update form servlet are finished, control of execution will then move to the form view JSP for the update form. Back on the client side, the client will see the update entry page, will make their changes, and click on the update entry button. We'll then have an update servlet to receive this request. It will use an update query class, which will be designed to actually update the desired record. Once these are done, we'll move to the read request to once again show the main page with its database table. To start, we need to add our update link to the table. If you recall, there's a method of the read query class which creates that table. If you have already watched the delete video, you will see that we have added a hyperlink to our table that will allow us to call the delete servlet. Let's copy that and we'll paste it above just to make it match our diagrams. In this case, we want something similar to happen. We do want to send along the book ID so we know which one to query for, but we want the href to go to update. We'll make this the URL mapping for the update form servlet. And we want the text that the user will see to say update. That should finish up our read query method for generating the HTML table. Let's now work on our update form servlet. Right click on controllers, select new servlet. Let's call this one update form servlet. Next, we need to edit the URL mapping so this will be called when we click on the link that goes to update. Here's our update form servlet. Let's select and delete the do post method. In our do get, we need to get the book ID. Use the book ID and a read record object to get the book data, pass control on to the JSP. Getting the book ID is easy. We want this to be an int. So we select int book ID equals. This is on a request parameter. Request dot get parameter book ID. Now that returns a string, so we need to wrap that in our integer dot parse int. And now we have the book ID. Let's skip down to pass control on to the JSP. We've done this on our other servlets, so let's move to one, maybe the add form servlet. Let's copy the code, paste it here, and all we really need to do is adjust to our JSP. 
Before we can call the read record object, we need to create one of those. We'll come back to this servlet to finish this here once that is done. Now we want to create a read record class. This is going to be very much like our read query, except it will take in a book ID and we'll form the select query based on that. So let's go to read query. Let's copy and let's paste. Call this read record. Here we are in the read record. Before we edit this, let's review the steps necessary for making a query. Anytime we want to do something against the database, we need to use the driver to make a connection object, use the connection to make a prepared statement, set up and use the prepared statement to query the database, and finally process the query results. In this case, we're going to do all of these. Processing the query results will take the query results from a select statement and we'll make a book object. We see that we already make a connection object. As we have copied this from the read record, we can go ahead and delete the getHTML table. We want to be able to return a book object, so let's make a book object as an instance variable. We also need to read in the book ID so that we can search for this book. So let's make book ID a private int. For book, it would be nice to have a, at least a getter. So once it's set, we can get that. Let's generate getters and setters. Let's pick book. We only need to get the get book. Okay. So once that's set, we need to make sure it's set once we do the read. In the do read, we need to change our query so that we can select star from books, but where book ID equals the user entered data. Now that we have a blank in our select statement, we need to fill in the blank by using a method of our prepared statement. We're going to use set int. We're going to provide the first question mark with the book ID. Now where does that come from? Obviously we need to pass that somewhere. We could pass it up here in the constructor. So this dot book ID equals the passed in value. And the book ID should be an int parameter for the constructor. So we pass in the book ID. We make our connection. Now when we do our do read, we have the query select from there and we've prepared it and our results come back as a result set. Now we need to be able to make sure that there is a book there and create, set up our book object. Let's move the pointer to the first record and we'll set this dot book dot set author to results dot get string from the author field. So what did I do here? If we read this from the inside out, we are now pointing at the first and only record in our result set. We're getting a string from the author field and then we're setting up our book object to hold that author value. Let's do the same thing for the title. As you can see, using the result set, get string or get int, depending on the data type, I've retrieved the values from the database and I've set up a book object to have those values. Here we are back in our update form servlet. We need to get a read record object.
recall that our constructor this time takes four parameters. It takes our database name, our username, our password, and now also it takes the book ID. We see that we also need to import our read record. Next, we need to do the read. That should query the database and set up a book object. Now we can get the book in a local book variable. Finally, we're going to need to set a request attribute so that our book is passed on to the update form.jsp. Now we're ready to create the update form.jsp. Right click on web content, select new JSP. Let's call this one update form.jsp. Here the first thing we need to do is get our book object. Book, book equals request dot get attribute book. Recall that we need to cast this as a book. And currently, our book has not yet been imported. This should read in the book and it's available for us to use in our form. The form itself should look a lot like the add form, so let's make use of that and copy it from the add form itself. I'm going to copy from title all the way to HTML. Now we can tweak this a little bit. Let's change the title to update a book and the headline to update a book. Let's change the name of the form to update form and update book. Update book will be the URL for our next servlet. Now down here in value, here's where we need to add some things. Let's go ahead and put the book ID as well. Recall that we want to display the book values within the text boxes of the form. We have those in our current book class. Get the book ID. Copy and paste. And then tweak this. Dot get title. dot get dot get finally let's change the value of submit button to update the book so when this is viewed we'll get the book value that was passed on from the read record query we'll show a form and the book itself, the values will dis be displayed as part of the form. Finally, when the form is submitted, we'll go to the update book servlet. It's now time to work on the update book servlet. Let's right click on controllers, select new, servlet, this one update book, servlet, next, and we need to adjust URL update book. The update book servlet, let's once again get rid of the do post. We're not using that in this application. Get the form data. Use an update 
query object to update the record. Then we need to pass control to the read use case. Form data should be pretty easy. Very similar to the that in the add servlet. So let's copy a little bit there. In addition to these, we also need the book ID. So we now have all the data. We're going to need to pass control to the read use case. Again, back from the add servlet, we should be able to copy that. Be nice to work with the book object, so let's create a book. We need to import that from our model. Once again, our servlet is almost complete, but we now need to work with an update query object to update the record. We'll return here to finish this servlet once we've created the update query object. Let's start from the add query as our template. Right click on add query, copy. Let's do paste. I'm going to call this one update query. Here we are with the update query. Notice an update query, we make our connection. Then we have a method called to do add, which takes a book object. So this is almost what we want to do. Let's change this to do update. Now instead of insert into books, we need to perform an update. So we need to adjust our query. This should be an update query on the books table. Update books will set title equal something author equal to something and pages equal to something where book ID is equal to something else. If we see that our prepared statement is set we got our book question mark number one is set to book title, two is to author, three is to pages. We then need to set the fourth question mark to the book ID. Then we can execute the update. So this should be complete. Back in our servlet we will need to create the update query. We'll do the do update and pass it the book. So create an update query object. Provided our database our username and the password. We need to import and then we do update, do update and we hand it the book. And that should perform the update. Here we are running the final version. I could tweak it a little bit to add a space between update and delete but I'll leave that for you. In addition while creating these components I made about three or four minor errors. See if you can find those as you're debugging. I've already corrected those errors in this one. So let me show you how it works. When I click on update, let's say for Hitchhiker's Guide, and click update, I can change the page numbers to 355, hit update, and you'll notice those change. See if you can debug the code as written to, to make it work as I've shown you here. In this video, you've reviewed the use case diagram for the update use case. In addition, we've added components for the update to the example application. This has been a Piercy production.